Okay. Um, so I guess this means now I have to look at like seven things simultaneously to make sure yeah. they're all recording properly. <laughs> you do suffer. fantastic. The the wonder of technology it's supposed to make stuff easier, but it turns out now it's just like infinitely more complex. Damn. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It makes you think. Right. Makes you think. I'm sorry. Uh, speaking I mean it's it's very much a, a theme of our podcast, which is what we're doing. Uh, w- welcome to Well, There's Your Problem, a podcast about engineering disasters with slides so you can see what the disaster is. Um, I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Uh, I am Alice Caldwell-Kelly. I am also on a podcast called Trash Future that's very good. You should listen to it. My pronouns are she and her. And I have listened to the fans, right? I've read the comments. Don't do uh, it. No, no, no. They, they they have a point. We we have a way of of like because we don't know what editing is of letting a disaster like spiral out into like oh it's a five hour episode now. So I'm gonna <laughs> shut I'm gonna shut up more and hopefully we can knock this out in like an hour. I don't know. I, anything could happen. Yeah, that's we, true. We, that's true. You know, the power well, might well, go well, off well, halfway it, through because no, there's just, a, a storm of the century well, bearing down no, on fine. us. <laughs> Did we have a? Did, we, did I hear a voice somewhere? <laughs> did I raise my hand effectively? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Liam Anderson, pronouns he him. Uh, I'm the guy that hates you in the YouTube comment section. Yeah, it's true. Yes. Although we all haven't right. been getting a lot of shit in the YouTube comment section, I got to give them credit for that. Like all, it's it's been justified credit for the most part. Like, why is this episode 19 hours long? Or uh, why does Alice interrupt Justin every sentence? And you know, I respect that a lot more than just like, uh, who's the British dude? Scottish, well, first of all. Yes. Second of all, girl. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I mean, some of the criticism has just been me, like <laughs> having to put out two hours of content a week <laughs> as opposed to one hour, like all the other podcasts. Yeah. So you should be paying me more. That's absolutely <laughs> true. <laughs> that Patreon. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So. What you'll see on the screen here, if I could find my John Madden device, Back. is a pier. Hmm. Right? You see this pier, and you'll notice that part of it has collapsed into a river. I, I thought it was just modernism. I kind of like the like slanted uh-huh. design. No, you're, that, that's you're bad. You're descending a staircase, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's deconstructivism, but in the sense that the building was deconstructed. <laughs> Uh, rapidly and in an unplanned <laughs> fashion. Um, oh, today we're going to talk about the Pier 34 collapse hmm. in Philadelphia. Um, Go birds. Yeah, you, yes. you said Pier to me, and I thought San Francisco instinctively, and I was like, "Damn, the fucking sea lions collapsed a pier." <laughs> no, we we oh. have piers too because hmm. we have a river. Oh yeah, this is just more examples of why you shouldn't ever go to a fucking nightclub. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe we finally did we finally did a nightclub one and it's not a fire is the thing. Yeah, it's not a fire. No, it's the opposite of fire. As a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> but first, before we talk about this, we have to do the goddamn news. <laughs> huh, who are these people? Oh, I've, I've never seen so, this image before, uh, let alone several hundred times in the space of one Twitter yeah. thread. <laughs> no, so they got they they got Ghislaine Maxwell. They 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 the the cops got her. Mm. Um, uh, I think the the FBI cops. I I forget yeah, exactly. They got Ghislaine Maxwell, apartheid diamond heir billionaire, still at large was it though. An emerald mine? <laughs> was, was it an emerald mine? Yeah, it was an yeah. apartheid uh, emerald mine. Uh, Okay. Yeah, but like uh, my my only comment about Ghislaine Maxwell is in the form of an audio drop, and it is simply. Because <laughs> like she's she she's <laughs> not no come on man we're, we're, she's gonna like trip and fall down the same staircase fifteen times. <laughs> Before she yeah. names anybody involved in anything, wind up with some high speed lead poisoning. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, exactly. 
So wait, were 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 Elon Musk's uh, emeralds? Were they ordinary emeralds, or were they emeralds of the chaos variety, or what? <laughs> May Musk cackled. You mean the apartheid emerald? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Elon Musk's mom? By the way, May Musk. She looks. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Four in like hundred and one Dalmatians. I mean, I, you know, I, I what, I, what I want to say. What I want to say about that yeah. aesthetic is, it, Elon, if you're listening, I'm gonna have sex with your mom. I'm gonna fuck your mom, Elon. Uh, um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. I, I want that Cruella de Vil pussy. We are protected. God hopes <laughs> by certain free speech protections. It's just, it's just like yeah, totally, America, totally free say speech to say want. that I want to fuck Elon Musk's mom. She's hot, dude. The, like she's got the like supervillain emerald heiress thing going on. I'm very into so it. So you, I'm gonna guess that you really have a, a whatever the equivalent of a lady boner is for uh, those old <laughs> SS exploitation movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not. Thank God we're on it, it's two not sides of the Atlantic. Inherently, inherently oh, racist. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> To be clear, I'm talking about May Musk there. Yes, the SS thing is inherently racist. What I okay, yeah, yeah, I, I gotta check. Man. Yeah, no, no, no. I understand. <laughs> I understand. No, I, I just I, I I respect I respect a lady who is like going for like the gray hair undercut and like a bunch of like ill-gotten jewels in a necklace. That's that's fucking cool. That's an aesthetic. That's a lady who has like made a decision about what her vibe is gonna be like. And the vibe is going to be super villain. I respect the hell out of it, and I'm going to fuck his mom. Uh, do you I'll think also, you think Elon Musk's mom and Ghislaine Maxwell have fucked? Ooh, that's sure. A, mm, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, why not? Yeah, no, yes, yes. <laughs> I assume <laughs> yeah. the lives of billionaires are basically just like the subplot of Archer, where just everybody is fucking. Yeah, everybody. I did this. It, like, I, I feel like this is there's gonna have to have been some like eyes wide shut orgy style situation. Mm, so yes. clearly, yes. Um, I, yeah. I, I do kind of feel for the woman behind Elon. Oh yeah, just like that, like oh that taped on smile. It's just like, like oh hmm. boy, you're gonna end up at the bottom of a river. Which I can say <laughs> because I'm in America. I mean, like this is this is the thing, right? Like every, she was at that party, so fuck her. Like I don't know if you saw, but right before we started recording, Ellen Powell, the former CEO of Reddit, yes. went on Twitter and was like, "I was actually at the party this photo was taken at, and I knew that Ghislaine Maxwell was just like trafficking child sex slaves." Or whatever but like apparently the cool people who m just made the list thought that was fine and i'm just like jesus everyone knew about this um i yeah i i, mean, I made this point earlier i i was like what well what what can you even do at that point because you know, it, when this was taken it was it knows was, about it's it. an open secret it's an open secret though like everyone knew that the feds had decided they weren't going to do anything about it yeah and like it, when it's that <laughs> level of like, forgive me, Ellen Powell, but like CEO of Reddit is not enough of an insider that I can be like, oh yeah, you totally get to go to the eyes wide shut parties, right? Like that—that's an open. That's that's a normal person, like a normal rich person, is aware that like this child sex ring is going on, and like, and she was hiding in in fucking New Hampshire, right? Like this oh, whole time, New Hampshire. Oh. Oh boy. New Hampshire. Oh, yeah. Someone tracked her yeah. phone. Someone tr someone tracked her phone to Dunkin' uh, Donuts in Doylestown. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> I <laughs> mean, like, this whole what this whole time I was like, Leonardo, no, Maxwell. She's I, I I was like, no, she's she's on a yacht in the like Virgin Islands, or she's like in Serbia in a bunker or something. And no, this whole time in like this nice craftsman style sort of like modernist villa. In New Hampshire, um, it's it's fucked, man. I don't know why. But I do know why. I know why the FBI arrested her now after having forced out the U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York, who was like, who really had a boner for investigating this and replacing him with just some guy. Um, so yeah, no, this is cool. And uh, rest in peace, Galen. Yeah, R.I.P. Wait, didn't didn't the guy not get forced out? They just told him he was yeah, forced out, and he's like, "I'm not." I'm not sure. I, I think they, he hmm. ended up stepping down anyway. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I do appreciate that's like you know obviously the the dimming uh, confidence in the American dream or whatever. 
Uh, I do appreciate Eddie's civil servant who's just like, nah, fuck that, man. Like, you can come and get me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea. No guns, no anything. Just, like, walled up at his office, in his corner <laughs> office, behind, like, a, a shitty copy of the Resolute Bus. Like, bringing pipe bottles of Jim Beam at the door. Yeah, he's just, like, like just nah. moving, moving a <laughs> shitty General Services Administration <laughs> issue credenza in front of the door and being like, yeah, this will hold him. <laughs> You'll never take me alive, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, in other news, uh, the, you, you remember how Ruth Bader Ginsburg voted to approve that pipeline? I do remember thus, that. Thus yeah. tarnishing her reputation. Oh yeah, that's the one notorious thing. RBG. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, they canceled it, so it was all for nothing. Yeah, fucking cancel culture strikes again. Goddamn yeah. dollars down the fucking tubes because as it turns out, uh, the shit don't fly no more. <laughs> Why'd they yeah. cancel it? Just like the economy not being uh, a thing yeah, anymore? I believe that's it. I just, I think so. Yeah, it's not. It's not gonna be profitable. Uh, huh. Yeah. Cool. I just noticed some of these place names. Yeah, Nossaway and Dinwiddie. Uh, Upshur. I'm sure. I'm sure. Oh, uh, hey, it's, not, it's not Shire, it's sure. <laughs> New Hampshire. Yeah. I, I, I gotta say it like I'm doing a Somerset accent. Yeah, New Hampshire. Do. Yeah, you do. And then we can all go up north for plates and gravy. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> I just found out today that bread in a can is a thing in New England. Oh, it sure is, buddy. Isn't that like Why? a survival food, Fuck like you. a baker bucket? You get Fuck like a can, you. The shit a can I've seen you bread. eat, and that's what you're coming up. <laughs> <laughs> you can get it. Have you, have you seen? Have you seen that picture of like the canned roast chicken that like oh, yes. oh, it, it, it comes no, out of the big can, and it's again. just it's very it's very bad. It's very bad, folks. <laughs> very bad. Not very good, folks. Very nasty. <laughs> People are saying many, many such cases. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, in in additional news, uh, American Airlines is back to flying full capacity planes, despite the fact there's still coronavirus. I think they, uh, they, yeah. they were. I think they were supposed to originally have. Uh, they were. They were not. They were going to do what every other airline is doing and have like middle seats open, shit like that. And American hmm. Airlines, another friend of Wilson, was like, "Nah, fuck that. Get it. We don't care." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do, do do the death drive. Get, yeah. I mean, get, come get, step into our death tube. You know what? <laughs> and hurtle through the air, <laughs> bro. It's, it's not that difficult. Just like pop the door open a little bit, circulate the air. It's fine. Just so, just this shit is just so goddamn stupid and cynical. That's a piece of because on a train, this would actually be relatively easy because you're just hmm. like, all right, every other row at a minimum, we're gonna we're just gonna roll it, you know, whatever half capacity because we're a federal corporation and we don't give a shit about the profit motive. Uh, you put more cars on the end of the train, just, yeah, thereby adding more seats. Right. I do like the yeah. idea of the American uh, plane having to have like a trailer. <laughs> yeah, just do a glider. Yeah, yeah, like like glider glider glider. Day vibes. <laughs> All right, well, it's just like towing a <laughs> shitty balsa wood glider full of ultra, like amusement. Ultra coach, you get a glider and a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Scum class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I'd, I'd rate this as the second worst thing American <laughs> Airlines has done, other than getting rid of the nice chrome. Plane, you know? <laughs> yeah, are we counting 9-11 in that list of things? They, they didn't do 9-11. Bush did 9-11. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, okay. you, want, you want flying to be an occasion, we'll make goddamn sure flying's an occasion. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing some right. fucking tweet years ago from whatever horrible quarter of Trad Cat Hell Twitter. <laughs> That was just hmm. like, oh, when flying was an occasion, then you were oh, like, Christ. top hazard shit, and I'm just like, you know what? What we should do is take all the Stinger missiles we've given to every emergency <laughs> group in the Sahel yeah. and every other part of Central Africa, and you give them to me, 
and I'll just sit there <laughs> all goddamn day, and I'll make it a fucking occasion for you. <laughs> you can still you can still dress up to fly if you want. You can still wear a top hat. Like everybody's gonna laugh at you, but you can do that if you want. I will Jesus. say that if I ever fly transatlantic uh, first class again, uh, uh, at, at the, to be clear, it was because we got bumped. Shut up. Uh, I will go full like <laughs> white tails, like just mm. real fucking ridiculous Bing Crosby ring a ding ding <laughs> shit. I'll consume yeah. two bottles of bourbon. Maybe I'll kill a stewardess. Yeah. <laughs> Make, making <laughs> making the flight <laughs> making the flight attendant bring me another monocle because I dropped mine in my gimlet again. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Another. <laughs> I, I, I will say I do not support this new thing where like you wear pajamas on the airplane no, or some crap true. like that. Take shoes off. Yeah, oh, those people should be shot. Off. Oh my god! I would I would rather that you get DVT than I have to see 14, your socks. Fourteen yeah. hours in a goddamn middle seat, coming back from Ben Gurion, and the the guy next to me fucking took took his take his shoes off like five minutes into the flight, and I'm just like, you know what? Uh, you'll have to edit this out. Maybe Hitler had some points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like there, there is nothing it like canceled for, canceled for being pro Hitler as well as going to Israel. <laughs> I mean, the, very efficient. <laughs> and, and the thing is, right though, like any transatlantic flight, and I'm kind of like I was glad when they were canceled, uh, and and you know I'm sad that they're now back. Uh, is that any transatlantic flight is a machine for making you into Hitler? Um, <laughs> yes. Like, yes. The, the first time that I flew transatlantic, it was Air India, and beautiful plane, beautiful 747. They had the cool, like, curlicues on the windows and stuff. I thought it was amazing. And then, like, 20 minutes after the meal started, like, recirculating the air from people having eaten Indian food in an enclosed environment and, like, airline Indian food, I was turning into Winston Churchill in there, man. It was bad. <laughs> Black Hole of Calcutta Part Two, baby. Yeah, yeah, no, it was yeah, no. It's it, it's, it's like not. I like I like the smell of curry. I do not like the smell of like preserved airline curry filtered through like a bunch of smokers' lungs and then <laughs> like whatever the fuck they use to line the air ducts in a seven four seven, like asbestos cool. and ferret corpses. All the all the air that comes in the airplane, like you're constantly getting fresh-ish air in through the bleed air from the engine. I love fresh air. I wonder what I, I wonder what the rate of air change in an airplane is. I have no idea because hmm. like the cabin is pressurized. I'm doing air quotes. But it's not like <laughs> airtight, right? There's hmm. air leaking out. That's why they got to force an ass load of air in as well. Um, what an efficient so you don't mode of transport. To, uh, poisoning. <laughs> Man, bring back seaplanes, is all I've got to say about that. Yeah, I think if you are, sub are flying transatlantic, you should have to work for it. You gotta yes. like land in Greenland <laughs> and Iceland yeah. and Ireland. Yeah, you, you gotta like <laughs> hang out on a pier in like on the west coast of Ireland while they refuel your shitty aluminum bodied uh, seaplane, and you have to like cram yourself yeah. onto a tiny wicker seat. That would be good. Yes. I, hey, man, I've done the Irish turboprop extravaganza. To Glasgow, and it was yeah. uh, it's fucking great. Thirty minutes, absolutely <laughs> terrified. <laughs> hey, are you saying you don't like the experience of being in the air, being shaken around, just like? <laughs> I don't even. I don't even mind that. Like, unlike Roz, I'm not a little baby bitch when I fly. Hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I white I, knuckling I, on like <laughs> the comments of flights. Yeah, I can't wait for our first live show. Uh, in Glasgow, when Roz both poops and pees his pants. <laughs> in like 2050, when the virus is gone. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> oh my god. We, All right. Yeah. Speaking of methods to go transatlantic, we need to talk about peers. Great segue. Yes. It's the end of the news. Yeah. All right. Good news. So, I put in a rhetorical question here in the notes. Okay. What is peer? <laughs> uh, it, it's when uh, people around you who you think are your friends tell you that you'll be cool if you do drugs with them. Oh, that's peer pressure. That's is, different. Is it, is, it, is it where a boat lives? I thought boats live in the sea. Yeah, oh, boats so live in the ocean. That they have a house. <laughs> 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 no, you're thinking of a houseboat. 
No, I'm not. That's where people live on the scene. That's not where the boat lives. <laughs> All right, wait, 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 wait. Does that mean that, like, a, a ship that, like, a boat that you drop off of a ship, like a skiff or like a lifeboat, does that mean that the bigger ship is its house? Yes, and by extension, wherever the boat live, the big boat lives, that's the little boat's house too. I see. It's okay. like a child. Yeah, it's domicile. I can't think of it. It's like a marsupial. <laughs> you know, pouch, you know, it's like a kangaroo. The little yeah. Joey boat po- peeks its head out right before a thirty foot. Rogue wave smashes it into nine neat little pieces. Yes. Aw. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> All right. So a pier is where boats Live. go to dock. Oh. Right. Now the reason you build a pier is you know you can go farther out into the water where the water's deeper, right? But also you can get more boats uh, in per linear feet of waterfront, right? Mm. So you know this gives you more surface area in which to dock the boats. Yeah, the the principles of uh, like docking boats and uh, like intestines surprisingly similar here. Yes. So back when everything was shipped, you know, transatlantic in a big break bulk sort of system, you know, this was pretty important because uh, boats could take days or weeks to load and unload. Mm. You don't want like a tramp steamer just occupying that whole like horizontal like frontage there. Yeah, you want to be able to fit like five boats in where you could otherwise fit in one. And your your waterfront property, that was like a busy place. There's lots of ships coming and going. Back in the day, there's like trains driving down the middle of the street, delivering stuff into the piers. You know, there's like trucks driving around. There's like horses and carts getting run over. You know, all the- <laughs> Just the, the main activity of horses and carts. Yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, I mean, I feel like this is one of the main pastimes of this podcast is figuring out horrific ways horses can be killed. Oh, I mean, that's that's most of history, right? And like, especially most of that's industrial true, yeah. history is just like a horse and cart getting mulched by a train. Yeah, that's how they did logistics back then. It's just you, you measured it in <laughs> it like numbers of sacrifices. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. That's what they had. Wait, before wait, hold on, hold on yeah. a second. Why do you have a spooky skull on that billboard on the top right? I'm just noticing that. Sp- yeah, there's a, a big spooky, spooky there's a there, spooky yeah. fucking spooky season. Yeah, it's true. It's it's gonna prefigure. It's like a memento mm-hmm. mori. Uh, you can see the New York City High Line here before it gentrified real bad. Mm. Uh, <laughs> a beautiful view of like a, a parking lot underneath it and like a spooky skull billboard. Yes, beautiful. So now we have containerization, so you can load ships more quickly. Uh, you know, it takes like hours instead of weeks. Mm, you have and giant that, port facilities yeah. out of town, so they're like, yeah, yeah. And they don't really have piers because, like, just having a, you know, a regular sort of, just just having a a a spot where the boat can dock parallel to the shoreline is usually enough because the boats are so big now, mm. and you can load them and unload so quickly. You don't need quite as much. Uh, yeah. You know, linear feet of waterfront to do it. Plus, you can just build this giant port facility. You have like basically infinite space. You can just keep going mm-hmm. forever. Uh, it's fine. Yes. yes. You, you don't have everybody crammed onto a tiny pier where they're being like uh, coerced into a mob controlled union uh, and like all of their horses are being like uh, just crushed underneath wheels. Or the horses are being unionized. There's not <laughs> yeah. enough oats. There's too many deaths on the horse job. <laughs> well, I mean, the the mob needs the horses' heads to put on yeah, the pillow. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. How, you know. how the fuck did Tom Hagen move a ho- like decapitate a horse, carry the bleeding horses? You know how much blood there is in a horse. Carry the horse's head up to the dude's bedroom, tuck it into bed with him, leave, not wake him up, and still get called not a wartime conciliary. What the fuck is that? <laughs> He had the uh, he had the mob controlled teamsters do it for him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah good, good gotta, job. Got to get a guy who carries the severed horse. Yeah, this head. this, is, this is a. Yeah. I got my I got my severed horse head guy. <laughs> this is still a pro Tom Hagen podcast. Uh, like yeah, yeah. All, all three of us we couldn't get made because we weren't full Italian. <laughs> it's true. I, I wasn't any Italian. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so as a result of uh, containerization, a lot of piers today, they're still there, but they're unused or underused. Hmm. And a lot of them have been repurposed for like recreation and entertainment. Yeah. Right? Like, uh, unlike British piers, where like a lot of the piers that we built were built for that because we had like pleasure piers that you just have like a fucking roller coaster on and shit like that. That was most of oh, the we, piers we here, have, but yeah, we have those too. Hmm. Uh, but not so much like in urban areas where, where, um, you know, they did a lot of shipping, but certainly down by the beach, yeah, you'll have like a big pleasure pier that goes out in the middle of nowhere, and you go there, and now you're in the middle of the ocean, and if a hurricane hits, uh, it falls in the water and dies. <laughs> uh, I mean, it falls in the water and you die. I guess also the yeah. pier dies. You, you get out far enough on a pier. This was what they had to do before boats that could take you to international waters were very accessible for everybody. Is you would have to like build a pier out far enough and just hope you were in international waters. And that was how the uh, like Epstein's of their day worked it. Oh yeah, if you if you walk that far down that path, you can gamble. <laughs> <laughs> He All got right. a little more, a little more, a little more. Just a slot sheet to the There's line. There's a painted so, line. A yeah. <laughs> 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 it, it, the, in my head, right, it's the, the sight gag is that there's a painted line floating on the surface of the water that then comes up the side of the pier and over the boardwalk and then back down again. And you're just like, man, that's convenient. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But today we're going to look at a specific pier, which is Pier 34, right? Hmm. The, right, the right. PBRRRCO. That's the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad Company. Ah, oh. commonly known lovers as, of acronyms. Yes, yes. Commonly known as the Reading Railroad. Hmm. All right. So Pier Thirty Four in Philly has existed since at least eighteen seventy five. Right. Um. It was uh first owned by S N W Welsh, which was a sort of old fashioned uh merchant shipping firm. Right. You know, sort of like. Hmm. Way back in the day, it's like, oh yeah, we ship anything, whatever you want, you know. Back when transatlantic <laughs> just, shipping was like a big deal, and like yeah, just know. just shipping all of your like insanely dangerous nineteenth uh, century stuff, just like waiting for your Amazon order of gel ignite and cocaine to get in. Yeah, all the guys exactly. who had to like ship it. Um, this pier was later sold to a coal company. Then it was sold onto the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad. Um, and around 1909, they enlarged it to handle more modern ships, and it became the size it is in this picture, right? Mm. Um, so this is mostly used for loading coal onto ships and barges uh, that was delivered by the Philadelphia Beltline Railroad, which is what's running down Delaware Avenue here. Mm. Uh, does, it, does the railroad run onto the pier itself, or do they just have to like take it off? Next I to. believe there was a railroad spur onto the pier at some point. Ah, uh, okay. I am not sure of that though. Um, I've only ever managed to find uh, really low resolution photos of the pier back in the heyday, which oh, is that's... the next slide, of course. Mm. <laughs> but back to the classic, uh, the classic. Well, there's your problem of low res photos. Yeah, low res photos and photocopier burn. That's how you know it's that's an good. official yes. document. <laughs> 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 Warehouse, sugar refinery, sugar refinery, sugar refinery, warehouse. Yeah, people Our love yeah. sugar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that this is far enough back that the American Ice Company has a warehouse. So you just have an ice man just coming around like with a big block of ice. Oh yeah, they're still like getting ice imported from the Arctic rather than making it. Mm. It's like that joke from The Simpsons where, you know, they, they lost three men on the last expedition. <laughs> oh, that was a real yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um again, mostly used for loading coal. Um and this is Delaware Avenue here. If you're new to the city, you call this Christopher Columbus Boulevard because that's what the uh uh that's what the name on the road sign says, but it's Delaware Avenue. Mm. Um <laughs> Yeah, need need to follow Baltimore's lead of dumping the entire street into the harbor. Um, well, it wasn't even yes. renamed until like ninety one, which is the dumbest fucking thing. Mm. Well, I mean, it's yeah, much and, easier. And it's still to... Delaware Avenue in parts, which doesn't even make sense. Mm. Much easier, I suppose, to climb up, unbolt a couple of street signs, and toss them into the water than to like yeah. move a whole Columbus statue. But oh, our mayor did it for us, even though he's a chicken shit little bitch. 
I was about to say, he uh, really had to stick it to, um, uh, what's it? The, uh, wood or ISIS. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. By 1984, this pier was surplus to the railroad's need, right? That, that was Conrail by this point. Mm, uh, that lasted a long ass time then. Oh yeah. I mean this, I looked up historical aerials on this and it was still like a, there were still coal barges outside by like 1981. Wow. Um, yeah. So, um, in, in 1984, this was owned by Conrail at this point, and they sold it to a lawyer named Michael Asbell. And he decided... <laughs> so, Asbell? Yeah. South Jersey scum. <laughs> he decided, let's turn it into a nightclub. <laughs> Gentrification. Yeah. So... Now, this is a similar problem to what we talked about on the wine episode in East Germany, mm. where all our productive industrial facilities are being turned into nightclubs. And, you know, pretty soon there'll be nothing left to build anything because everyone will turn it all into a nightclub. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love to go to the steel mill nightclub and then just be unable to buy anything that requires any steel. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I, I, I accidentally turned like the last... I don't know. Let's say like the last flour mill in America. It's a nightclub now. Now there's no more mm -hmm. bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jen, people don't know this, but NAFTA actually requires that you turn all of the racism factories into nightclubs. Destroying our American heartland <laughs> of the process. I know. There's like uh, the, they're meeting. Uh, uh, you know, the New York Times reporter meeting uh, the salt of the earth in the heartland in a diner. Yeah, things haven't been the same since NAFTA was passed, and they turned the, uh, the, the, I don't know. The uh, dick-sucking dick factory. factory. <laughs> from, a, from a factory into a nightclub. Still do a lot of yeah, dick-sucking there, but, you know. Yeah, but you gotta do it recreationally, and it's not the same. Yeah, you don't get paid for it anymore. That's neoliberalism right there. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking casualization of labor. Yeah. God damn it. Anyway. So Pier 34 was a pretty heftily built structure, right? This was built for 500 pounds per square foot. That was the, mm. so that's enough for like heavy machinery. That's if you have like a big pile of coal on there. If you have a back a train up on there, it can handle all that crap, right? Well, the uh, thing is, tr coal, very heavy, like uh, a ton of coal weighs like five tons easy. That's true. I'll stand by that uh, uh, figure. <laughs> <laughs> Not nearly as heavy as a ton of iron ore. That weighs like 15 tons. Oh, jeez, but... yeah. <laughs> so, according to uh, Hidden City Philadelphia, the construction was 2,500 yellow pine piles, 18 inches in diameter, driven 50 to 70 feet into the riverbed. There's a wooden deck on top of the piles, and on top of that deck was eight feet of fill dirt. There's a cover of pavement on top that was surrounded by a concrete seawall. Um, hmm. Pier 34 was constructed to support a train track across its length, as well as to withstand bumps from ships in the river, right? So, you Man, know. I hate when I get bumped by a coal barge. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Not so good. That's no. why it's got to be hefty. Mm hmm. So. You know, this is a pretty hefty structure. You should probably be able to build a nightclub on top of here, no problem, right? Oh, sure. L nightclubs weigh a lot less than coal. Yes. Uh, like, a, t a ton of nightclub probably doesn't weigh that much. It's probably like, that's probably like a third of a ton, yeah. Yeah. So, um, this is the only picture I could find of the pier. Um, back in his heyday, it's back, back here. <laughs> classic, yeah, classic, that's great. Yeah, classic Department of Records quality image. Yeah, <laughs> we do four just... kids a week, sometimes on Mondays. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. No, you can't come see the high resolution archives. Go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the the city of Philadelphia's Department of Records operates on the same principle as Justin. When you're doing the news, you just copy the the news banner from the last episode, <laughs> so it gets lower res every time. That's like, that's so like that, I, yeah. That's how it started out. Uh, that started out as a beautiful high resolution yeah. seal, uh, yeah. like two weeks ago. Yeah, <laughs> I I have been in the Department of Records. I have been in. Several parts of the city archives, and uh, oh boy, 
<laughs> yeah, it's yeah, I've been in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I work for the city. I just I'd go in there every so often. And be like, man, where the fuck am I? Am I in some sort of alternate dimension? Is is this is this where the shadowy global cabal meets? How do they find anything in here? <laughs> well, this level is incredibly musty. Were you in the um? Were you in the part that's in the old bulletin uh printing office? Yes. Or were you in? Okay, yeah, with the big freight elevator that yep. you like, you could drive a car into. Yeah. For some reason, yeah, po- well, possibly, the rules. Yes, possibly several cars. That freight elevator. I was just like, "Oh, look how big it is." I was like, "No, nah, you know, no, I'm good on elevators, man. I, I don't even want to be. I don't want to be swallowed <laughs> alive whole with my car." Because <laughs> I looked at some shit in the archival photos. Fuck this. Just, just do it. Just driving like a forty nine Packard up into the freight elevator and doing donuts in the Department of Records. Cool. You could probably do a donut in the elevator. Jeez, you <laughs> probably could, honestly. That is a big fucking elevator. Um, <laughs> Welcome to the podcast that stays on topic. <laughs> yes. So that was also where Drexel's uh, uh, shitty classrooms were on the basement floor of that, huh. um, as well as the um, Formula SAE temporary lab was on top of the city archives. Um, and of course, we had a special fire extinguishing system that would completely flood the lab if like there were a major fire but that would also completely flood the city archives by extension uh, uh, really good planning yeah incredible yeah uh, it's all because that's just stacks of moldy paper down there i mean <laughs> just uh, yeah, you successfully evaded a problem but like that sounds yeah. like something that we would set up in one of these slides is and then they put the like the racing team on, on top, top, on yeah. top of the archives. Sure safety is why. Mm. Oh my god, that's a dumb building. Um, all right. So, the bulk of this pier dated from 1909. So it was 75 years old when it was sold to Asbel, right? Um, and during that time, the railroad shifted most coal export operations down to Pier 124. That is where there's a big automated rotary dumper system. Uh, hmm. That could load a hell of a lot of coal very quickly, much better than like guys with shovels or whatever they had here. Um, so, as I mentioned before, aerial photography said it was in use until at least 1981, but there was an engineering report done in 1978 that said the pier has probably got about 12 years of life left in it um, before it hmm. needs like major repairs or needs replacement, right? So, by 1990. Yes. Correct. Because this part of the Delaware River is tidal. So you got tidal forces acting on it, you know, a couple times a day, each day, right? Uh, you got like, you know, you, you got like normal deterioration from just, you know, wooden piles soaked in water for a hundred years, you know, all this stuff. It got hit by a barge pretty hard sometime in the 1950s. Oof. Um, and it's old, right? But despite this, you know, plans go forward to turn this thing into a nightclub, right? Because now... This is what it looks like today, um, and you see we have I-95 here, mm. right? And right. the and dumbest apartment the... building in Philly, the residence of the dark side. I was about to say, it's even got the title, like, the blank at blank. It's it's supposed to look yeah. like a boat, right? Uh, yeah, I see that. And it is yeah. near absolutely fucking nothing. You could, like, maybe walk to South Street, but it would be a huge pain in the ass. Yeah, I love to yeah. cross like eight lanes of traffic. Yes. Um to get to a freeway. Um yeah, cool. Freeway overpass. Right. Yeah, no, it looks great. It it looks great. And I understand this. why people paid millions of dollars for those fucking condos. Yes, Roz, I'm sorry. You, you have the wrong mindset here. Oh, do I? <laughs> <laughs> you need to put yourself not in the mindset of a sane person. Hmm. Right? Way ahead of your butt. You need to put yourself right now in the mindset of a South Jersey nightclub operator. I don't want to do that to do myself. That. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want to open a waterfront nightclub. You want to do it on Pier 34. Why do you want to do that? It's a great location because you can drive in from Jersey, come down 95, get off the highway, get right into the parking lot, right? Then you can have, you can slam like, I don't know, seven martinis. 16, 16 beers, yes. 16 beers, right? <laughs> And yeah. then you can pay, and then you can drive drunk home real easy, right? <laughs> Back to Jersey. 
Yeah, yeah, back to yeah. You could go to your, your shitty Philly suburb and talk about how much you love the birds and how much you love the Sixers, despite the fact that you never go to Sixers games because you're a fucking racist and you're scared of the black people there. And you could talk and talk and talk about how all Pennsylvania taxes are so fucking bad. And here in the People's Republic of New Jersey, I still got my rights. So you could go down for shitty Sunday gravy at your cousin Vinny's fucking god awful duplex somewhere in Hamilton. <laughs> and just bitch and moan and bitch and moan about WIP, how uh, they're not putting good programming on, and how the fucking Phillies are never going to world World Series because Bryce Harper's too fucking ungrateful. And then you can add on a drug drop go to your kid's fucking school and end your miserable fucking pathetic life because you weren't good enough to live in Morristown. <laughs> yeah, just, you know? No, but he also mentioned another advantage if you're a South Jersey uh, nightclub owner is is that because 95 is here, of course, that that sort of blocks your nightclub off from being accessed by, you know, those people. Right. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Not a fucking accident, bro. I know. Right. So. um, It's also very difficult to get here, you know, very difficult to get here on foot or by public transit. Hmm. Guy, Unless you guy. live at the residences at Darkside, then you can probably walk that. Well, this is yes. the, this is the one of the shitty things that actually this is just another ramp because I, I I'm taking over this podcast. Uh, there <laughs> is not in frame, I don't think, but there is a bar in Philly called Morgan's Pier, which is Roz's least favorite bar in the world, as oh, far yeah, as I can tell. There, yeah, uh, it's not very good. It's loud. It's just because we never learned our lessons from the first fucking time we built a bar on a pier, um, and you, it is like. It's so fucking funny because it's just the only way to get there. It's like you can either take the 43 bus, which if you're coming from where I live is incredibly inconvenient, or you can take, you guessed it, a fucking Uber. So when you get to Morgan's Pier, there's 500 fucking post-grad pen kids just a block it up fucking Delaware Avenue, and they're all shitty drunk, and they're all just like, I just want one more $19 martini to feel <laughs> something before they go fucking home to their whatever duplex in the city where they're also afraid to, they don't have to look at black people that's the fucking thing about these bars it's like that shit's on purpose i fucking hate morgan's beer i'm protected by the constitution leave me the fuck alone <laughs> stop, stop building bars where people can't fucking walk to that's all i'm fucking saying yeah yeah all right so michael asbel leased the pier to a man named eli Carentney, right hmm and he opened Eli's Pier 34 in 1992, right? Two years after the, the thing is supposed to, like, fucking Two have years. major yes. renovations. Yes. And so I, I don't know very much about Eli's Pier 34. Uh, apparently there was a major boxing match there once. Mm. Um, and then also part of the pier collapsed into the river in 1994. Uh, that was this section over here. Uh, had a partial collapse, but this apparently wasn't serious enough for walk it off. Any, anyone to yeah walk it off. Yeah, between Bernard Hopkins and Eric Reinhardt. Yeah. Mm. The- yes. Um. So, uh, eventually, Eli Carentney, uh decided I should find some outside money to invest in this and really class up the joint. Right. Mm. Yes. So. We need to talk about the Mushulu. Oh. That's this uh, boat here. That's a nice boat. A nice I boat. Mean. Oh, yeah. So the Mushulu, as seen in The Godfather Part 2. Um, <laughs> and Rocky. And Rocky, yes. It was built in 1904 in Glasgow as Yay. the Kurt uh, for a German <laughs> shipping firm, right? Just thinking about like a, a, a Glaswegian shipbuilder having to have that dialogue with like a German dude who's like, yeah, I want the ship to be named the Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> you what, motherfucker? <laughs> yeah, yeah I've, 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 I want I want the ship to be named the Kurt, and I, I want to use it to, to transport the, the beer from from <laughs> the fucking from Kiel nach uh, nach America, and the dude's just like, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. This is a four masted bark, right? You can see uh, th- three square masts, uh, and then you got one four and a half mast in the back. 
Um, 396 feet long. All right. There's a real complex history behind this boat that I can't fully get into. Um, it was originally built for shipping. Did that thunder come through on the audio? A little bit, but it's fine. <laughs> that one did. That one oh, came boy. through, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's an apocalyptic storm going on uh, right now. Look, it, it's to give you a break from the like nightly mysterious explosions. Exactly, right? Yeah, if we die, we die doing what we love. Insulting New Jersey. Uh, it's like four. <laughs> it's four in the afternoon here. It looks like it's midnight outside. Mm. Um, so this boat was built to. Sh- it's because we're talking about maritime shipping. Suddenly the weather is getting angry. They shipped coal, coke, nitrate, and then eventually converted the boat to ship grain from uh, Australia to Europe. Right. Mm. In World War One, it was seized. By the Germans, or seized by the Americans from the Germans. Ach uh, nein, mein Boot has <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I just switched from my, my one kind of German, which is like, I was like, yeah, I was a Kurt, into the other kind of German, which is like the southern German fancy boy. And I'm just like, oh, no, they took the boat from us. That's, that's, that's going to come in handy for the beer episode. <laughs> <laughs> so... Say they renamed it the Dreadnought after they hmm. seized it, and then they found out they oh, already God. had a Dreadnought, so they renamed it again to Mashulu. Dreadnought right? too. <laughs> Dreadnought. It means Dreadnought in Seneca, huh. uh, yeah, Native uh, American language. Allegedly renamed by uh, Edith Wilson. I read that. Oh, hmm. um, Woodrow's thought, w- wife. Yeah, so I'm surprised they didn't just name it. Shiny, happy white supremacy, but you know, yeah, have, just name, it, just fit. name it a racial <laughs> slur, yeah. <laughs> so a whole bunch of stuff happens to this over time. It was at one point re-seized by the Germans during World War Two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the poor uh, yeah, we have the boats back again, <laughs> <laughs> and it eventually wound up by 1970 it was being used as a hulk in stockholm to uh store grain right Mm. and then it was bought by a company called american specialty restaurants corporation oh boy (laughs) they added new fake masts and rigging so this this all comes from the 1970s it's not real um they towed it to south street Mm. seaport museum in manhattan for use as a restaurant um and then eventually it was bought by the billionaire heiress to the Campbell soup fortune, Dorrance Hamilton. Dorrance? Dorrance. 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 Uh, okay, fine. Why do rich people name... I mean, this is just like the XAE 12 of its day, right? Yes. What the fuck is a Dorrance? It's a Dorrance. Because it used to be that rich people uh, could, 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 would never get laughed at. And now they have to get mm. laughed at on Twitter, which is at least yes. one good thing that's come out of this stupid Yeah, hell. Didn't Tucker Carlson marry into the Campbell suit fortune, or was that like, um, was it like another... I think it might have been like, it was either Campbell's soup or it was like Hungry Man Dinners or something. Swanson, thank you. Yeah, it's, it uh, was the Swanson like frozen dinner fortune. Uh... Chris making a cameo appearance on the podcast, coming in from work to tell me that Tucker Carlson was like born into the Swanson frozen dinner fortune. <laughs> that's uh, that's a hell of a way to make your money. Well, uh, mm. so her company, uh, Dorrance Hamilton's company, was called HMS Ventures. Uh, yep. Cultural yeah. appropriation. That is cultural yeah. appropriation. Yeah. So Eli Carentney wants to bring the Moshulu to Pier 34 to, to improve his uh, pier uh, nightclub, right? Um, and he eventually comes to an agreement with uh, Dorrance Hamilton. They'll bring the Moshulu down to Philly. They'll patch up Pier 34. Um, they did a whopping $500,000 worth of repairs after the 1994 collapse, which was mostly just bracing existing piers, right? Hmm. And um, HMS right. Ventures bought Eli's Pier 34 outright, and he, they kept Eli on as a manager. Well, right? that's the dream, so, right? You get bought out of your stupid idea, and you get a do nothing job. So the ownership structure at this point is uh, Michael Asbell owns the physical pier, right? 
Mm-hmm. HMS Ventures owns the boat and the nightclub, and Eli is now just a manager, right? Okay. This is this is in May of 1996. Six years after the thing is going to like fall into the water. Yes. But having done some bracing work. Just like a little bit of bracing work, you know, it's probably yeah, fine, it's right? Fine. It's fine. So now, now you got a, a really classy joint. It's got like a restaurant and an old tall ship, and it's got good highway access so you can drunk drive home really easy. <laughs> this um, sounds and- like the worst fucking place in the world. I, I don't <laughs> want to go here. Well, well, good news, Alice. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. So a couple years pass, right? I'm gonna spoil some stuff with the next slide. But um all right. So the actual incident that occurred, right? Well, the boat looks you, fine. The boat well the boat's still there. Uh, <laughs> That's a classy joint. Didn't you just hear us? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so in two thousand, uh a new venue opens up at the pier. Um they wanted to bring, you know, like, I guess a younger crowd in. Mm-hmm. So they opened Club Heat at the oh, end no. of the pier, right? Uh, Which is basically just a big tent, the, right, yes. that they put at the end of the pier. Billy loves the pier. <laughs> I love to drive drunk to a tent where I can drink some more and then drive drunk home. Yes. Well, that's convenient. That's, that's, the, that's the Cherry Hill dream. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna take you're not gonna take public transit anywhere. <laughs> so all right. So there's there's a problem that they start to discover after they set up the big tent. There's a big crack in the floor two to three inches wide, right? Oh, that's not so good. So Eli decides, all right, the thing we need to do is cover the cracks with a rubber mat. Until- <laughs> yes. Until we find a more permanent not, solution. Not even, right? not even Jesus. like taping it off or anything. <laughs> just putting one of Rubber the like the, no those mats that they used to cover There's cables. No crack if you can't see it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Out of sight, out of mind. But I mean, I guess it, it's very safe in terms of nobody's going to trip over the crack. Yes. So, Michael Asbell hires a contractor to in- inspect the pier and find out what was happening. Right. And his contractor delivers a one-page report, which basically just says, shut this thing down now. <laughs> a one-sentence <laughs> report. Yeah. <laughs> Get out now, dickweed. One employee of the contractor told Michael Asbell and Eli um, hours before the incident that this pier may only have a few tides left in it before something happens. Little awesome. Do you know. uh, yeah, uh, John Q. Just, foreshadowing uh, just <laughs> decides to fucking yeah. This venue was only open for about a week in total, uh, but uh, yeah, buildings very rarely fail suddenly, right? There's usually a long period where it's really obvious and visible that something's wrong. Um, oh, like and, the Samsung department store. Yeah. Yes. And in the case of Club Heat, you know, the obvious thing that was wrong was that this crack kept getting bigger. Hmm. Wonder how that happened. Well, difficult, difficult to notice. You just keep putting rubber mats just over, keep it. dumping mats on there to fill the gap. Guy making like not even you know five bucks an hour back in two thousand, just running back and forth to whatever the mat warehouse, frantically <laughs> throwing it down. And some asshole's like, "Hey, can I get another fourteen dollar martini?" And he can't because he just <laughs> he has become mat. Arms are all mats. Like trying to impress a girl at church group, just. Just yeah, like, I, g- I, g- I gotta, car. I gotta this load up the truck the and drive to Matt's <laughs> Discount Matt. Yeah, Matt's. Uh, that's uh, they have, a, they have a fat cat that sits on the mat. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's one of those middle school dances where the guys stand on one side and the girls stand on the other, but entirely by accident. Yeah, but there's also like a giant <laughs> rift yeah, opening the in the joke. middle. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, May 18th, 2000, Club Heat was open for less than a week, and the crack was now a solid foot wide. What the right? fuck? Mm. Yeah. How much, how much heat would you even be getting in, like, on the harbor in Philadelphia? In, uh, just like in a tent? In May? Not uh, a lot. 
Yeah. Especially they didn't have as much global warming back then. Um, oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So around 6 p.m. that day, the tide started to go out, right? Mm -hmm. And as the tide goes out, of course, the water pressure on the pier, keeping the pier in place, is reducing, right? Yeah. Um, this time, the pier didn't quite hold yep. itself together. Um, mm -hmm. And at 8 p.m., just as the night was getting started, uh, the club fell in the river. Uh, a mere 10 <laughs> like a mere what like 10 years after they were like man you gotta do something about this pit yeah uh up pretty well <laughs> all of us yeah, yeah, all of us all of testament to the uh folks who designed it that it stood up for so long but not the folks who maintained it now keep in mind the actual extent of the pier uh went much farther this way um mm, yeah you look at those yeah. uh those boys there uh, yes. you, what, do you say buoy like yeah a, a buoy okay david Bowie. Yes. Bowie. david Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> so all right so uh what happened all right so the pier falls in the river you had three young women uh jean marie ferraro who was 27 monica christina rodriguez who was 21 and Deanne White, who was 25, they all worked for the Camden Aquarium. They were celebrating Deanne's birthday. Uh, they all drowned. Uh, Jesus. No, it sucks, yeah, man. You can imagine uh, a tent on top of water as you were trying to get out. It's the same shit we always talk about. It's just the bit like interesting ways to die, although this obviously is just goddamn depressing. It's like, Hey, you're drowning, mm -hmm. and now there's a, I assume, canvas on top of you, so you can't fucking move. I just, again, the like, you're just trying to have a nice fucking night out, and some billionaire dipshit is just like, I can't be arsed to pay $1.2 million to keep my dumbass nightclub literally afloat. Um, instead, <laughs> yeah, I'm going yeah, to, yeah. two years prior to this, would you like to know what, what foundation she had started? Would oh, you like please. to know? It's a nonprofit that seeks to preserve live uh, rare breeds of livestock, and it does this by gathering and storing both seed and embryos of the animal and, and animals in its collection. So she fucking had money oh. for for bull sperm and whatever. Weird, oh, weird I'm horse, sorry. Horse, did did you want to horse not horse drown? Horse. I can't hear you. I have to spend trillions of dollars on animal cars. Yes, literally. <laughs> yes, you died because instead of even though I could have easily done both. I simply could not be bothered to fix the club I own, and instead I spent the money on on horse sperm. Literally that, which is so <laughs> fucking absurd. I I just God damn it, man. Good lord. I uh, that that I'd like I I I was I was aware of the like class character of this one, but like I was not aware of the like horse cum detail. Yes. And that's gonna fucking haunt yes. me for a while. Is just be like, you go out, you try to like, you celebrate your birthday, you work in a fucking aquarium, and, and, and then like, so, mm -hmm. and some rich dipshit's horse fetish is responsible in part for you just dying horribly and totally uh, like avoidably. Yeah, is Jesus incredibly dumb. We should ban rich people from having anything yes, to do with animals. Yes, we should yeah. ban rich people like. I just, I just, I just oh, fucking so, yes. see like whatever Elon Musk simps in the fucking replies, and I'm just like, throwing him is not going to make you any richer. So please just shut the fuck up. Just go fucking outside and tear down his house at Penn, please. Yeah. Mm. No, I like. The, I I think it's it's a nice little. I'm gonna show you like tear it down. A nice <laughs> little row house. It has like that those nice gothic windows. You know, Although I suppose I, this I, is I, the row house itself was good. Elon Musk is bad. This is if nothing else. A cautionary tale of never getting to the club too early. Mm, yeah. Yes. No, don't 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 club at eight p.m. Don't go to the club. Period. Just no. Don't don't, don't do that there. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. So forty three people were injured, including eight first responders. Um. Jesus. How the, first, how the fuck did they do that? I mean. I mean, the tent the was in there. Bits of pure itself people got probably out. lodging itself in your life. You can't fucking see anything either. It's eight. It's dark now. Like. Yeah, you're you're getting like a lot of splinters and shit. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. So, you know, this was uh, and it was dark. Yeah, the river's cold. 
this was an entirely preventable accident, of course. So, um, who got sued? Uh, so well, I'm I'm fucking hoping everybody <laughs> yeah. starting with like the Bull Sperm Foundation. Yeah, oh that, God! <laughs> I did read uh, one of the things that actually kind of inadvertently broke my heart a little bit was that Dean White was just about or had just graduated from Temple, uh, which obviously is a Temple man myself. Like, you, know, you feel a bit of kinship there. And when she died, or uh, as part of the settlement, which I know we'll get to, they started a, uh, a scholarship foundation uh, through, I believe, her church. And there's no mention mm-hmm. anywhere of this, of whatever, Dorrance Hamilton donating for that, or trying to, like, at the very least, like, beyond legal costs and, like, whatever the court settlement is, it's just like, you feel like you don't even have a fucking obligation to like help that foundation out. Like mm-hmm. that you what you should do if you had any goddamn decency at all is fucking take your three houses cuz she did have three and you sell all of them and you say here's a 100 million dollars for a scholarship foundation for poor people so they can just they can go to school or just so anybody can fucking go to school but no cuz this is just this isn't even a blip on your radar cuz you have lawyers and shit to handle that. Because you're never going to be, you're never going to yeah. fucking bother. Even at the, well, you're, you're going to go yeah, play you know, fucking HMS right, Pinafore. Right, exactly. yeah. like you're just going to go to your horse even foundation and never have to fucking think about like the lives <laughs> you ruin. <laughs> yeah, because like it be, being that rich, your whole life is like this, like sort of glide of whimsy, where you can just be like, oh, I'm going to do some sailing ships, and I'm going to do some like, I'm going to jerk off a horse or whatever. Um, and no, it's it's so fucked. Why would you collect horse cum? <laughs> what a sentence. Why would well, you, though? Because uh, you're a billionaire and you've got some real fucking problems. Yes. Yeah. So, alright, Michael Asbell and Eli Carentney, right, they both faced criminal charges. They were both charged with third-degree murder as well as several other uh, uh, charges. And a jerk. I'm I'm look I'm looking for the justice system to knock this one out of the park. It's it's real easy. You fucking put a bunch of mats over a hole in the floor. The jury was hung. Both eventually pleaded guilty to lesser <laughs> charges in 2007, and were both were sentenced to a whopping 1,000 hours of community service and 11 to 22 months of house arrest. Oh, and it, and it only took seven years. <laughs> oh, don't worry, the, the billionaire uh, did not uh, have any... Of course. Of course. No. This is this is this is why police abolition, right? Because if you're like, man, if there are people like this who are so transparently bad and who need to like uh, be be punished in some way, well, what are you gonna do if you just have no police and no courts? And it, it turns out the answer is pretty much the yeah, same exactly. thing. Right, like the the city loses out on a thousand hours of picking up garbage. I feel like an angry mob could have handled this probably a little bit better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the the civil lawsuits, on the other hand, eventually came out to twenty nine and a half million dollars compensation that came from Ashbel Carentney and also billionaire Dorrance Hamilton, who actually owned the damn thing and whose company made the decision to cheap out on the repairs. Uh, mm-hmm. Worth noting that Dorrance was the sole, the, the sole director and stockholder in HMS Ventures. Um, awesome. So once again, uh, $29.5 million divided between three people who died and like 40-something injured. Three quarters of it went to the estates of the three uh, women who died, and then the rest was divided up amongst the uh, injured. I think the, the injuries were mostly like hypothermia and bullshit. A few people got like serious lacerations, but uh yeah. yeah. I, I almost I almost drowned then seven years later I get a check in the mail for like an Xbox. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so it came out in a wash after this through the lawsuit that about five hundred thousand dollars in repairs had been done in the nineties. They were wholly inadequate. It was a band aid solution. What engineers had recommended be done was a one and a half, uh, one point two million dollar repair that would have involved completely replacing six hundred of the twenty eight hundred uh, wooden pilings, right? Hmm. Um, and again, Dorrance Hamilton is a billionaire canned soup heiress, right? Spending <laughs> one point two million dollars for her is like if one of us 
bought a cheeseburger, right? Yeah, yeah. Th that's that, that's <laughs> the money that you don't even notice because your money makes that much money back, yeah. like instantly. Um, uh, another thing is, according to um, this, pro this problem had been evident before, right? Uh, one article mm. said police also claimed seized documents showed that a carpet company had, in the past three years, written to Corentini explaining problems with his carpets were due to shifting of the floors resting on top of the pier ah. and not problems with the carpets this themselves. This dumb piece of shit is like, man, this carpet's defective. I can see the sea through it. <laughs> <laughs> My dad once put a car for $12 where you can see the, uh, the road through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> that was from World Socialist website, which has a really bizarrely complete article on this event. That's like a, a mm. weird, weird Trotsky news news site, because I guess what they do now instead of handing out newspapers is they have they have um, news websites that look like they haven't been updated since two thousand five. Uh, well, good for them, I guess. Well, I don't. I think a, a lot of websites from two thousand five are more usable than ones today. So good, good on yeah. the Trotskyites, I guess. Got a little spinning gif, hammer and sickle. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> But it's got a four in it, you know, because fourth in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, and according to an article in the Inquirer at the time, um, there were no inspections done because L&I license and, licenses and inspections uh, here in Philly, they claimed they only inspected structures above grade and that the peer inspection was the Army Corps of Engineers job. Uh, anything above Z level zero is not our problem. Yeah. Cool. But the Army Corps of Engineers said they only inspect piers at the footprint of the, cheer, uh, of the pier was changing, right? So hmm. when they did the repairs, they weren't changing the footprint of the pier. So they didn't look at it. <laughs> so no government That's body... just a loophole. Yeah, no government body was actually responsible for inspecting the piers, as it turned out. Uh, huh. Seems like something you should you should have somebody inspect, but what do I know? I know, right? I mean, it's not like, you know, these things have been sitting here rotting for 95 years or anything. <laughs> it's not like there's like, over a hundred of these like, things. The idea that there wasn't even like a pre-sale inspection or permits or whatever, like, oh, you know, boss, uh, half this fucking nightclub is falling into the river. Like, nope, just go ahead, open her up. That's a problem with the carpets. Casual fucking attitude. <laughs> so a after this, uh, Mayor John Street called for regular inspections of all city piers. Um, so which hadn't they? They just like a, a new idea. A new, Nobody had bothered to do that before. A new idea. What if we inspect the piers? Yes. Incredible. That that's the kind of leadership that any city needs is after a pier falls into the, the fucking river, is to be like, man, somebody should make sure these piers don't fall in the fucking river. Oh, the safety manual is written in blood. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how our um our, our uh facade inspection ordinance got passed is that a uh a, a big stone corbel off of a fancy old hotel in center city just mm -hmm. fell from the 30th story. This is about a one, like a, pr probably a 500, 600 pound corbel. Just Yeah, fell, made of stone, which it, is like easily 1,200 pounds. Yeah, it hit a judge right on the noggin. Ooh. Yeah. One of those six yes. feet under, like comical deaths. Oh yeah, I mean, it probably drove him six feet under. Like, it probably collapsed <laughs> into like a, a yes, sidewalk. Now he has appeared, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, no one has to inspect him. Yeah, so now you have to inspect facades to make sure that doesn't happen again. <laughs> mm. If I was writing a safety manual, I would simply write it in ink. Ah, <laughs> sounds expensive. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta think about things that might happen as opposed to react to things that do happen. I don't like it. Mm. <laughs> so I guess, I, guess, I guess the lessons we can draw from this are... Billionaires are all depraved pieces of shit. Yes. Um, nightclub owners are also all depraved pieces of shit, but in like a, a less baroque way. Yeah. Where they're just like throwing more carpets on top of a yawning chasm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you should probably have the city inspect stuff. 
Um, oh, the city doesn't inspect stuff. The city, no. you have to mm-hmm. find someone to inspect it for you, and then they submit the report to the city. And then uh, a L and I guy looks at it and says, "Hmm, okay." Um, <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. I used to do this well, report. Glad this is never going to happen no, again. Isn't. Yeah, absolutely not. There's no way that any other of these peers would ever have the same problem. It's not like inspecting these things is incredibly difficult and expensive, and uh, it's not like anyone would try and cheap out on it on the in the future. Um, yep. Yeah. So. Yep. 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 Another, yet another incredibly stupid and preventable disaster. Uh, happening because people don't want to do the fucking maintenance. Oh my god, nope, that's right. Can't be bothered. Gotta start a horse yeah. eating farm. Yep. <laughs> yeah, gotta go. Gotta go. Stock up the horse semen in, yep. in a barn in Rhode Island. Yep. Yep. <laughs> what is it called? Like Swiss Valley Farms or something like that? Swiss. It's like yeah, Swiss, it's, vill- Swiss Village Farms. Yeah, it's on the whatever uh, compound. Swiss Village is known for the horse cum. Compound she bought in Newport, uh, which is again why we should seriously consider raising Rhode Island to the goddamn ground. Yep. Yes. Man, we got this one in in like an hour, I, under an hour and a half. I know, right? Incredible. We should do this well, more don't often. Don't worry, because we're going to make you sit through part two. Which is the beer episode we gotta record today, anyway. <laughs> Part two is we just leave the recording going for another hour and a half, and you just have to listen to us. Yeah, you just, you just have to listen to us bullshit for uh, an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. Uh, but no, oh, no man. it will actually be the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. That's right. Well, a- no, another case of failed inspections. Um, uh, no, that was bad design, actually. No, we'll we'll find out in, in the episode. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, does anyone have commercials before we go? Uh, no, listen to Trash Future. Um, uh, follow Liam on Twitter at mm-hmm. Old Man Anderson. Uh, follow, follow Justin on Twitter, oh. except he's been banned. So follow the show oh, account yeah, on show Twitter. Account. Wake, wake, which dudge, is dudge. Yeah. WTYP pod yeah. on Twitter. Oh, watch. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'm Alice Avazandam on there. Um, oh, I, my uh, I got one. Yeah. Watch, watch the YouTubes. Yep. Oh, I just wanted to, I know we've been talking about uh, bonus episodes in exchange for donations to bail funds and shit like that. Oh uh, shit, I, I totally I, forgot I, that. I yeah. think, uh, I can confidently say, I did a tally, quick tally yesterday, we are at this point north of $10,000. Oh Jesus. Just barely north, but, and I may be wrong, like I said, it was a quick ad, but like, uh, I don't want to uh, single the person out, so they shall remain anonymous. They sent me a DM asking to remain anonymous, but sent uh, a, a very large chunk of money in exchange for the bonus episodes. Uh, and I also wanted to thank everyone who sent in show ideas, shit like that, when you, uh, when you sent in your emails. We do read them, even if it feels like we don't, because I've been auto-replying to all of them. <laughs> yeah. But thank you again. Absolutely. We really appreciate uh, it. Yeah, and the offer is of course still good. Um, there is like, w- as there is a wave of uh, like incipient fascism, it means there's more bail funds to donate to. Yes. Uh, you should bail out the uh, the Lakota people who got arrested protesting uh, Trump's weird Mount Rushmore rally. Um, uh, just yeah, th- th- good causes. There are plenty of them out there, and if you send us proof that you have given money to them, then we will give you the bonus yes. episodes, which we are yes. about to record one of. Today, possibly not right That's now. Right, but yes. yes. Yeah. All so right. that one will probably be like 18 hours or so. <laughs> <laughs> it has literally three times the amount of slides that this one has. Oh boy. Uh, all Sweet. right. So we call this all one right. and then we'll, yeah, all right. Yep. Then, then we'll get to work on the next one. Yeah. All right. And uh, okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay.